In this video, we are going to show you how to use the Mail and Deploy API. The Mail and Deploy API is a bit of an advanced topic, that is why we have prepared a use case to show you how to use it. For this use case, we have prepared a sample intranet portal that works with a HTML page and some JavaScript. And, we would like to have a download report button in that user interface that connects to the Mail and Deploy API and requests a report document which has certain parameters set. So this would typically be the case if you want to integrate mail and deploy in a CRM system. You open a customer in the CRM system and you want to create a report for that particular customer that's already filtered to it. So we need to be able to pass parameters to the API request. Then after we have requested the report document, we want to wait for the report document creation to be finished and then download the document as a PDF file or Excel file or whatever to the user's computer. And we will show you in a minute how we have implemented that and how that works. So in general, how can you connect to the mail and deploy API from external applications? So we do provide special libraries for .NET. So if you're in a C-sharp development environment or Visual Basic Net, you can use the .NET library. We are using the JavaScript library today to do the API connection. But at the end of the day, the API connection is just a matter of HTTP GET and POSTS. So you do request an HTTP on a REST API endpoint, and that is what actually triggers the API, or the test execution or report, document creation or whatever. So you do not necessarily need the .NET library or the JavaScript library. They just make your life a bit easier because they hide the complexity of the underlying HTTP communication. The good thing about this is that thousands of programming languages support HTTP requests. So it's not rocket science, it's something that's very established in the industry. So it should be easy to integrate in almost any environment. Okay, let us quickly go through the steps that we have to perform in order to do the implementation on our HTML page. For all API interactions with mail and deploy, whether it's an extension, you're using in ClickSense, whether you're doing a task in the reload script or you work with the JavaScript.NET library, you will need an API key. So you have to create a mail and deploy user of type API and create the access key. And this is what we already did here. So we created an API user and we have the access key right here. We are going to show in a second where you need to paste this access key if you want to use the JavaScript library. The second step is including the mail and deploy API library into the HTML page. Just to give you a quick idea of what we did. So obviously we will not integrate it into an actual CRM system now. So we did prepare a small example that just consists of an HTML file, some company logo, and a style sheet, and in this HTML page we are going to integrate this button and the page looks like this. So, as we said, it's just a mock-up. We kind of simulate as if we were on an internet page or a CRM page. So we are on a customer overview page of some customer, and this is the button that we're talking about. This is the button that should connect to mail and deploy and get us a report for that particular customer. The important link to the mail and deploy API here is the JavaScript library, which will be shipped with your mail and deploy installation so you can find it in your mail and deploy installation folder under SDK and libraries. So before we actually go into the more technical stuff, we can show you how the button works. So essentially, we just designed a very simple report in mail and deploy, which we called customer report. So that report receives an input parameter that contains the name or the ID of the customer, whatever works or whatever is required in your use case. So this is the input parameter, and then it just filters the click app, and in this case, just outputs a simple pivot table from the click app. We go back to this page here and we are going to show you the result first, and then we will show you step by step how we implemented it. When we click request report, you can see that the button shows processing. And once it's finished, you immediately get the PDF as a download from your website. You can open it. You have a customer report for customer plus the click table right below it. Obviously, we all know the report could be more complex, more beautiful, whatever. But it's just to showcase how that works. Now let's dig deeper into how we actually did the implementation. And this is going to be quite technical, but we like to keep it as straightforward as possible. It should just give you an idea of how to do it. That should just be a starting point for you to investigate what the API of mail and deploy can do. So, it's a very simple HTML page that we have here. Let's just imagine this was a more complex CRM page, a SharePoint page, whatever. Essentially you have the body of the page here where we have the company logo, all the texts, and all the content of the page. 
And right here at the top, we have some JavaScript that actually does the stuff that we want Mail and Deploy to do. And the most important step here is to integrate this JavaScript API library that gets shipped with Mail and Deploy into this page here. And you do that using the script tag in HTML and just refer to the mail and deploy.api.client.js file. This file will give you an object that's called mail and deploy client that then we can use to easily communicate with the API later on. Now then we need a bunch of JavaScript functionality here. It looks quite complicated, but you can see it's only about 70 lines of code. So at the end of the day, it's actually pretty straightforward. So what we've created here is a JavaScript function that we call initialize connector. That is a function that initializes the object that this JavaScript library provides because obviously, we need to tell this API library where our mail and deploy instance is running. So this is just the API endpoint of mail and deploy very similar to what you have to enter or configure when setting up the ClickSense extension. And we also have to provide the API key here. So we just copied the API key from my API user and pasted it right here into the initialized connector function. The second function that we have is the actual JavaScript function that requests the report document. And again, without getting too technical, we will go step by step through what this actually does. So the first thing it does is it calls the initialized connector function, of course, because before we can pass anything to the API we need to provide the API key and the endpoint here. Now this is the actual magic that's happening, and it looks more complicated than it actually is. What we do here is, we create a JSON object, like a JavaScript object, that contains the properties of our request that we want to send to mail and deploy. And how this object looks, you can find that, first of all in our API documentation. You can use this one here as a template as well. And of course, if you have any issues with setting up such an object, then you can always get back to us and we're happy to help. But essentially, we create a report document request structure and assign it a new ID, so that's just a unique identifier for that request. And then we specify, okay, we want to create a report document from a report. So we need to specify the report from which we want to create the PDF that documents or the mail and deploy report. And we do that by simply calling the API function get report with a specified ID, which is the ID of the report that we want to request. Now, how do you get that ID in our newest releases? Remember this is 1F15 at the beginning. In our newest releases, if you go to reports and edit, you will actually find the ID right here, 1F15, and all the other stuff. So we just copied the ID from here and pasted it right there. Then there's other stuff. We can specify the file type. So do we want to create a PDF document or an Excel workbook or a Word document? In our case, we simply specified zero, which is equal to PDF document. Again, you can find in our API documentation, which number refers to which file type, but zero is PDF file, and all this stuff here is just to feed the report parameter with a value. So remember, if we go back to the report, we do have a parameter for that report that is called customer. So when requesting the report, we specify that we want to provide values for the parameter named customer. And then we can specify a list of values. And each value can be specified as a text value here, for instance, or as a numeric value if it was, a numeric click field that you want to filter with that parameter. But in this case, we'll just say, okay, the parameter customer should be customer A. So we want customer A to be passed on to the report. This is just an overview of how this works. Anyway, at the end of the day, we do have a request object that contains all the information required to request the report document from mail and deploy. So in the next line, we make use of the persist method. The persist method is just an API method that says, we do have a request object here, please save it in the database, do something with it. And if you persist the request object, then mail and deploy will say, okay, there's a new request coming in, I am going to process it. And I'm going to return the report document to whoever requested it. The next two lines are just disabling the request button. Remember when we clicked the button and said, request report document, it changed into a gray color and it showed processing so that the user knows, okay, something has happened, something's going on. Great, I'm going to wait for the report document to be downloaded. So that's what we are doing here. And this line is just to tell the website, look, we just sent a request to mail and deploy. Every second ask, is the request finished? If not, wait another second and ask again. Otherwise, if it has finished, download the actual report document to the user's computer, which is exactly what happens in here. So every second we use the mail and deploy API function get request with the idea of the request that we have sent to mail and deploy. We get in return, a request object that has a true false flag has been processed. And that's pretty straightforward. If the request has not yet been processed, then simply wait another second and try again. 
If the request has been processed, then unlock the Request Report button again because the user should be able to click the button a second time if they wanted to and download the report document. And downloading the report document is just a matter of using the actual content of the report document with some Magic Base 64 introduction code. Again, no need to technically understand what's going on. You can actually copy and paste it, if you need that, then you give the download a title. Then you just perform the download by linking it in the background. And to actually give a bit of an insight into how to debug those things, we can actually console lock stuff here to the console. So for instance, after we have created the request object here, we are now going to do a console lock so we can actually see the request object that we have created here. Yeah, you can now see this is the request that we have specified in our JavaScript code. So it contains the file type, the ID, and the report with ID 1F5. So this is just a structure that describes the report that we want to export. We do have a parameter value here where we fill the parameter customer with value customer A. So this is a good way to debug, if something's wrong, standard JavaScript debugging. And we can actually do the same thing, not only for the request but also for the return that we get from mail and deploy. When we continuously ask, has the request been processed? If not do it again and if it has been processed, download the file. So we will just console lock this here, and again, press F5 and you can see that every second now we get the return from the mail and deploy API and then now we get the download and you can immediately see. In the first return, it says, has been processed this is false because the request has still been processed by mail and deploy. And it hasn't finished yet. Now has been processed, is true. And in the return structure, we now get the actual content of the report document as a base64 encoded PDF document. In this case, the file type, when it's been created, the title of the report, all additional information that there is, and the download has already been processed. Yeah, we have the third customer report here and that's it. We hope it wasn't too technical. It was a bit of a deep dive, but we hope we could show you how to, with just a few lines of codes, even though they look more complicated than they actually are. Integrate mail and deploy into a third-party application, a simple web page or any other third-party application that supports HTTP requests, and sending JSON objects. You can not only use this to request a report document, you can do everything that is possible with the mail and deploy API. So we could also integrate a button here that says execute task, and then instead of requesting a report document, you could write a JavaScript function that executes a task from an internet portal using the mail and deploy API. And that's it. Thanks for watching.